After more than 12 hours flying across the ocean, an American Airlines flight was unexpectedly forced to turn back when its pressurization system lost control, causing the cabin to lose pressure at an altitude of 10,000 meters. This seemed like a one-off malfunction, but it soon revealed something far more alarming. Engineers uncovered a series of serious technical faults that could cause the plane to crash at any moment. What would have happened if these faults had never been discovered? And why do such serious incidents keep happening on Boeing aircraft? Let's find out. On a flight from Dallas to Tokyo on April 2025, the pilots of an American Airlines Boeing 787-9 noticed something strange. The cockpit windshield was slowly fogging up from the inside, even though the skies outside were clear. A thin white mist crept upward from the bottom edge. The cooling system had automatically switched to emergency mode, despite no warning signs in the cabin. The engineers later found the cause to be even more surprising. The climate control circuit board lacked an EMI electromagnetic interference filter. That single missing detail allowed the system to misread data and issue false commands in an environment filled with radar, satellite, and navigation signals. Even more concerning, at least three other 787s used the exact same board with no EMI protection at all. But that was only part of the horror unfolding. In early 2025, engineers at American Airlines discovered that on some Boeing 787-9 aircraft, hydraulic oil lines had been installed too close to hot air ducts in the service bay, a layout error that could lead to a smoldering fire just beneath the passenger cabin. What's more alarming is that this wasn't a maintenance mistake. The flaw originated from Boeing's original technical schematic. Maintenance crews followed the manual correctly, but the diagram itself showed the wrong placement. During long flights at high pressure, the oil lines can expand slightly and touch the outer shell of the hot air ducts, leading to micro leaks, just a few milliliters per year. Not enough to trigger pressure loss and invisible to the eye. But if the oil builds up in a tight space and reaches high temperatures, it can become fuel for a slow burning fire. What's terrifying is that this area has no leak detection or temperature monitoring. If a fire breaks out, the entire mid-bay, right beneath the passenger cabin, could become a sealed combustion chamber in under 60 seconds. Just a few months earlier, on November the 20th at 24, a long-haul flight from Madrid landed in Miami without incident. But the captain filed a technical report, a persistent, faint vibration in the fuselage, as if something beneath the aircraft was misaligned. Engineers found that the forward cargo door wasn't fully sealed. One edge of the door was slightly out of alignment. Not enough to pop open, but not flush with the airframe either. At cruising speed, nearly 900 kilometers per hour, this tiny gap allowed a stream of high-pressure air to sweep across the aircraft's belly, subtly twisting the fuselage in a rhythmic pattern. The result? uneven oscillation of the nose and body for more than eight hours. Vibration sensors recorded a deviation of nearly 0.5 degrees, enough to affect the outer composite skin. Unlike aluminum, composite materials don't dent. They crack from the inside, often invisibly. Minor but continuous micro vibrations can create tiny cracks that silently grow after each flight. And eventually, a section of the fuselage could rupture midair. Just when it seemed like things couldn't get any worse, a chilling issue from the past came to light. On October 2023, an American Airlines 787-8 was cruising from Santiago, Chile, to Miami at nearly 12,000 meters. The weather was calm, the flight stable, until passengers began feeling headaches, ear pressure, and nausea. Oxygen masks suddenly deployed throughout the cabin. The plane made an emergency descent and 45 minutes later, an emergency landing. The report concluded, sudden loss of cabin pressure, no injuries. But post-flight inspection revealed a frightening truth. The cabin pressurization valve had been installed incorrectly. Instead of responding to pressure drops by pumping in air, the valve remained stuck in default mode, allowing pressure to continue falling unchecked. Worse still, the entire pressure sensor system had been turned off during a previous maintenance session and was never reactivated. The pilots had no idea the cabin was depressurizing until the oxygen masks dropped. So how did this happen? But wait, thanks for still being here. Please show your support by hitting like, share, and don't forget to subscribe to get notified about our super interesting videos. Thanks a lot. 
An internal report later revealed that the maintenance team had mistakenly used a Boeing 777 manual, a completely different aircraft with different wiring and valve systems. The manuals for the two aircraft had similar sections, and the documentation system offered no clear warnings to prevent confusion. Take an overview, and these incidents might seem like isolated glitches, but taken together, they reveal a disturbing pattern. The Boeing 787 was once a symbol of American Airlines' ambition. Smooth, fuel-efficient, and dependable. It formed the backbone of the airline's longest routes, but flight after flight, malfunction after malfunction, that pride has begun to crack. Literally. And perhaps the most dangerous part of it all isn't a specific fault, but the fact that many of these errors may have been there from the very beginning, and no one ever thought to double-check. So, what could possibly explain this situation? In fact, the deeper engineers dug, the more unsettling the picture became. The failures weren't random, they weren't even new. Many had been built into the aircraft long before passengers ever stepped on board. At Boeing's massive plant in Everett, Washington, once hailed as a symbol of American aerospace excellence, inspectors uncovered a series of alarming manufacturing flaws in the very place the Dreamliner was born. FAA records from as far back as 2020 documented microcracks in the rear fuselage of several 787s. These weren't surface defects, they appeared in the joints where carbon composite panels met, right at the stress points where the wings flex in turbulence. Some cracks measured only millimeters, but in those high stress zones, that's all it takes. Even more disturbing, multiple insiders claim that faulty parts, pressurization valves, cargo door panels, had passed quality control without ever being properly tested. One former employee described entire shipments being cleared with nothing more than a signature and a short note. Urgent release, aircraft behind schedule. And yet, this wasn't just about loose bolts or missed checks. In some cases, the very documents meant to prevent errors had become the source of them. Notably, after a string of incidents involving the climate system, an independent expert found that the cooling circuit boards on many 787s hadn't been tested for electromagnetic interference, despite operating in a signal-rich environment full of radar, GPS, and satellite transmissions. Worse still, Boeing's own technical documentation made no mention of EMI shielding requirements for these boards, even though they were installed on more than half of American Airlines' Dreamliner fleet. American had planned to replace the flawed components by early 2025. Budgets were approved and replacement parts were ordered. Then, Boeing intervened, just weeks before implementation, asking for a pause to avoid disruptions to new aircraft deliveries. There were no alerts, no industry-wide bulletins, only a quiet postponement with the vague reassurance that current systems are performing within expected parameters. From there, they continued the silence. Planes kept flying. So did the risks. And eventually, the system slipped, this time because of a document mix-up. Maintenance crews working from a checklist meant for the Boeing 777 had unknowingly misconfigured pressure control systems on several 787s. On paper, everything looked correct. In reality, cabin pressure valves were installed in reverse, and critical sensors were never reactivated after maintenance. The first signs were just faint burning smells in the cabin. No alarms, no injuries. Three consecutive flights reported slight drops in cabin pressure. It all seemed minor, until one captain raised concerns and requested a full inspection. That's when engineers discovered the real issue. The pressure valve had been installed in reverse, and the sensor system had never been reactivated after prior maintenance. The problem wasn't with the technicians, but with the documents they were using, official maintenance checklists pulled directly from Boeing's own database. But that system didn't clearly separate aircraft types. There were no bold red warnings, no alerts, just subtle differences buried in hundreds of pages of near-identical diagrams. And that's what makes it so disturbing. These weren't just isolated human errors. They were symptoms of a system that allowed them to happen, recorded them, even distributed them as if they were acceptable. Because to be dangerous, a technical fault doesn't have to cause a crash. It just needs to repeat, quietly, flight after flight, until it can't be ignored anymore. In the end, how many more aircraft are still flying with hidden defects, just waiting to be discovered? American Airlines operates 37 Dreamliners. If even 20%, just seven or eight jets, 
carry similar defects, the danger is no longer hypothetical. And it doesn't end with this carrier. United Qatar Airways and others all received aircraft from the same production line, with the same suppliers, using the same Boeing-issued schematics. No airline has publicly reported faults, but none have confidently said their fleet is immune either. Worse, sources say many 787s delivered since mid-2024 used shortened checklists to meet post-COVID deadlines, which means errors, reversed valves, inactive sensors, unchecked EMI boards may still be flying. If it takes fogged windshields or sudden decompression to uncover the truth, then what really needs fixing isn't just the aircraft, it's the belief that this system ever guaranteed safety at all.